Okay, we want to look at the electric and magnetic fields, but before we do that, let's start with the gravitational field. So let me say, if you're on the surface of the Earth, which you most likely are, but not for sure, and I have some object, there is a downward gravitational force. This is some mass m, then the downward gravitational force would be mg. g is the gravitational field. On the surface of the Earth, g is the vector 0, negative 9.8, 0 newtons per kilogram. That is the gravitational field. It's constant, it's in the negative y direction, and here it has units of newtons per kilogram. So if I have a mass of one kilogram, uh, and then I have a mass of two kilograms, it's going to have twice the gravitational force. That's how this works. What if I'm not on the surface of the Earth? Okay, well here is the Earth. That's, this is the planet. Okay. It's not bad. Uh, and I'm over here. Now, I, and I have some mass m, and this is the mass of the Earth. This is the radius of the Earth. But more importantly, this is the distance from the Earth to the object, r, um, vector. Then I can calculate the gravitational force. F, g, is g, mass of the Earth, mass, over the magnitude, this is going to be negative, over the magnitude of r squared r hat. And I went over this before, okay. But I don't really want that right now. So suppose I change the mass. What if I put a mass of one gram or one kilogram or whatever? So I want to, I want to have this force per unit mass. F g over m would be negative g m e over r magnitude squared, r hat. Now, this is equal to g. This is the gravitational field because I did the force per unit mass. Since the force depends on the mass, I put a little test mass there, and then I divide by that mass, and I get g. If I want to describe this gravitational field as a vector, it's not a force. It's a force, it's a potential force you can think of it. That's probably a bad term, I shouldn't say that. but. If I wanted to describe this, uh, I could draw my Earth right here, and I'd have it look like this. Nope, that's not what it looks like. I'll take that back. Here's my Earth. This is a vector field. This shows the, uh, the direction and the magnitude of the vector at different locations. So if I'm closest to the Earth, I have a gravitational field pointing towards the Earth, and it gets stronger the closer I get. So these vectors over here are further away, and that's the gravitational field. Now, what if I have another object over here, like the moon? almost drawn to scale, but that moon should probably be a little bit smaller. And I want to find the gravitational uh, field at this place right here. Well, I have two gravitational fields. I have the one due to the Earth. I'll draw it bigger than it should be. F, I'm calling, I'm sorry, G1. And then I have that due to the moon, G2. The total gravitational field, G, is just the vector sum, G1 plus G2. And we call this superposition. So if I want to find the vector at any particular location due to any number of masses, I can just take the individual gravitational fields due to the individual masses and add them together. And that's the, the gravitational field. And again, I think I did something like this with the Earth-Moon system, and I'll link below. This is a reminder to me. And if I forget, you know, leave a comment, and I will add that link, because I'm here for you. Okay, but that's the gravitational field. We don't really care about the gravitational field, but when we start thinking about electric field, it's useful to think about the gravitational field. It's not the same thing, but the same idea. Okay, I'll talk to you guys later.